So I'm here today with Paula from affordanything.com and I'm very excited to share a story with you. She has achieved so much in her life. She's a successful journalist. She traveled the world, visited 30 countries. She has a portfolio of rental units. She has a content marketing company. So how have you kind of gotten to where you've gotten today? I think I took it one goal at a time. So when I graduated from college, I, like many people, envisioned myself working at a company for the next 40 years. And so I got a job at a newspaper, um, started as a reporter, uh, spent a few years there. By the time I left, I was a deputy news editor, which sounds bigger than it is, <laughs> small paper. I realized that if I wanted to take a vacation, if, if I wanted to take a single day off, I would need to write a formal request and send it to HR for approval. When I realized that that was the case, I, I knew I didn't want to spend the next 40 years like that. I quit my job in 2008, handed in my letter of resignation, and then went and traveled for a little over two years. Mm -hmm. But when I came back, I realized I would possibly have to get a job. So I, I started my own business. I started, like, became a full-time freelancer, became self-employed. So my goal had basically transitioned from traveling to figuring out a way to be completely location independent. Okay, yeah. And uh, I achieved that by earning enough to support myself. Mm -hmm as a freelance writer. So I was like, this is great. I can work from my laptop anywhere in the world. That's awesome. And then after a couple of years of doing that, I was like, you know what? It's good, but it's not enough. <laughs> the next step after this is to create streams of passive income mm -hmm. so that I, I'm, I could be completely financially free so that I would never have to work again. And so that was when I started buying rental properties and basically taking the money that I was making from my location independent job and investing it into streams of passive income. Did you have any experience with rental property before that? Nope. And why did you choose rental properties over just investing in the stock market? Or I could control the purchase a little bit better. Mm -hmm. you've, you've got two elements in stocks, right? You've got the value of the stock itself mm -hmm. as it appreciates or depreciates and then you've got the dividend that it pays out. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas with a house, yeah, you've got that too, but you don't care about the value of the house as much. The emphasis is really the income that it pays out monthly. The initial process of buying a house and fixing it up mm -hmm. is a huge pain in the butt. Yeah. It's a lot of work. But once that's done, once it's bought and it's fixed up and you've got a property management company in place, it's really hands off. It's just you kick back and the checks come in. You are financially independent at this point? Right now the, the rental properties that we have create about thirty five to forty thousand dollars a year in completely passive income. So that's not gross, that's your passive that's, income. That's that's net, yeah. That's oh, after wow. paying for the management, vacancies, repairs, maintenance, that's wow. After all costs. Uh, with six properties? Yeah, with six units. Or six units? Wow. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot on your plate. How do you decide what you're gonna work on now? What goes on the back burner? When do you take time for yourself? How do you keep from getting overworked? So I'm a big fan of outsourcing. One thing that's helped a lot is I've started mentally conceptualizing myself as flipping projects. Whereas a year ago I would have thought, oh, I could do it myself mm -hmm. and keep the entire, well, or most of the gross revenue. Now I think, okay, I've got this project, I'm gonna flip it, do a little bit of management, and right. keep the spread. So you would say you put the emphasis on earning Absolutely. rather than saving. Yeah. But you save a high percent of your income, mm -hmm. you buy used cars, so you are a good saver. You spend an equal amount of time buying a new car versus a used car. Right. So there's no additional output that's required from me. Last year, Will and I saved jointly 77% of our income. Wow. The thing is, we couldn't do that if we were making 25000 a year or 30000 a year. Mm -hmm. The only reason that we're able to do that is because we've really focused on earning more. Mm. And the more you earn, the easier it is to save. What would be the main message or theme that you want people to get? Ditch the cubicle and, and live free. Like, people are capable of a lot more freedom than they realize. So you can have location freedom, you can have total financial freedom, you don't need to be shackled to a job that you hate. And you can afford to do anything. Not necessarily everything, but you can afford to do anything. And if you want to learn any more about Paula or uh, the ideas she's been talking about today, you can visit her website at affordanything.com. This has been great. Thank you so much for having us up here. Oh, thanks, thanks for coming. This has been awesome. Bye. Bye. Awesome. <laughs>
<laughs> I said awesome at least a thousand times. That's awesome. Awesome. I said awesome again. Awesome. This has been awesome. Oh, I did it. I did the awesome. <laughs>